Hello coders, this is Jared with Renaissance Coders and in this video we are going to cover branches, what they are, whether branches are efficient or not, how to create them, how to get access to branches that have already been created, how to merge branches, and how do we delete branches. Now this video may be a little heavier than some of the other videos within this source control playlist, but there's a lot of great information in this video. Okay, so let's cover the first big question here. What are branches exactly? Well, that's not a super easy question to answer, but I will certainly do my best. To really understand what a branch is, we first have to understand how Git stores data. When you create a commit, Git actually stores a commit object that has a pointer to the snapshot of the content that you staged, the author of the commit, the message metadata, zero or more pointers to the commit or commits that were the direct parents of this commit. Now that last point may sound a little weird to you, but it works out like this. The git object will have zero parents for the first commit, one parent for a normal commit, and multiple parents if the commit occurs as a result of a merge between two or more branches. Now that we quote unquote understand a little more about how git commits are stored, we can achieve a simple definition of what a branch is. A branch is really just a simple file that contains the 40 character SHA-1 checksum of the commit it points to. Okay, so branches aren't really anything complex. You know, it's really just a very simple file. There's nothing really magical there. We're not duplicating files or anything like that. It's just very simply a file that references a specific commit. Okay, so now that we understand that a branch is really just a reference to a specific commit, our next question that we need to answer is, are branches efficient? Well, the answer here is yes. Creating branches is extremely efficient. All that has to occur is for 41 bytes to be written to a file. Deleting a branch is also really efficient. So when you create a branch, all that happens is a new file is generated that points to a specific commit. Also, the number of branches will not really take a toll on the efficiency of our repository either, because branches are again just really small files that link to commits. Okay, on to the next question. How do we create branches? Now I'm going to cover the creation of branches within my terminal application. Because it is a more manual process for creating branches, so we can go through multiple scenarios. But as I have said before, it is also my preferred method of working with Git. I do want to make a note that the process of creating branches in both the GitHub desktop application and the source tree application is really easy. Now I have my uh, iTerm application open here and all I have to do to create a branch is write out the following command. To create a branch we just simply have to write git checkout dash b and then our branch name. So I'm going to name this branch number one. Actually, let's just go branched. Okay. Not a great name, but it's short and simple. Okay, now this command actually does two things. It creates our new branch and checks out that branch at the same time for us so that we can now actively work within this branch. So now if I actually run the git branch command here, we can see that I'm on my branched branch. As you can see, I've got three other branches within here, the master branch new branch and a testing branch. Okay, now you may be thinking it can't be that easy, but it really is if all you want to do is create a branch that derives from the master branch. Now, sometimes we may want to create a branch that derives from a branch other than master, and that is also really easy to do. First of all, let's look at a circumstance that may cause us to need to create a branch that is derived from a branch other than master. Okay, in your git methodology, you may create a dev branch that all of your work will be completed in. Well, what if you had several large sections of functionality that multiple developers would be working in? In that case, it makes sense to create sub-branches from the dev branch rather than the master branch. Now, creating a branch in this ma manner is actually really easy as well. All we have to do is enter in the following command. So if I do git checkout dash b and I'm just gonna name this sub branched b oh forgot the h and after that I'm gonna do the parent name for branched can't spell here we go press enter and now I've created a new branch that I actually pulled from branched so if I do git branch again 
we can see that that's in here. Now one thing you could do to check and make sure that's working is run the git show command. And the git show command is going to show you which commits you're on, your author, the date, uh, and the recent changes or the recent commits. Okay, now that we have covered creating branches on our local machine, what about getting branches uh, that someone else has created and we don't have access to yet? Well, again, this is pretty easy. In a recent video, I covered the git fetch command, and that is going to come in handy now. To get access to a remote branch that we may not know the name of, we can simply run the git fetch command, which will show us our new branch and now we can run the git checkout branch name. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is actually create a remote branch. So I'm gonna go to GitHub really quickly, uh, git ignore test, and now in here I'm just going to create a new branch. So I'm gonna call this uh, Renaissance. Okay, and now I have created a new branch, as we can see here. So if I go back to my terminal application, now I can run the git fetch command. And as you can see, that's pulling in uh, two new branches. And all I have to do now is git checkout renaissance. And as you can see, we have now set up our local renaissance branch to track to the remote renaissance branch. Okay, so there's one other thing I want to cover really quickly, and that's that when you create a new branch locally, it isn't automatically set up to track to the remote branch because the remote branch technically doesn't exist. And again, I can show you that by just going up to GitHub, and if I click here, you can see that we're missing a branch or two, right? You know, our sub branch, our branched and sub branched are not here. So if I actually go back to my terminal and I get check out branched again and then what I can try to do is actually get push but it's going to give me a quick error and basically what this is saying is the current branch branched has no upstream branch There's a lot of branches in one sentence and to quickly fix this actually git gives us a command to run so let's run that command just git push dash dash set dash up stream origin branched okay cool now let's go check and github and make sure that branch is actually there let me refresh and now we see that branched is actually here so when you create a local branch like this if it needs to go to your remote repository then you need to run this command okay so that covers creating and accessing branches now what if we wanted to merge a branch and that's actually really really important merging branches is something that you absolutely have to know in git so there's a really simple sort of methodology that goes into merging branches and there are three commands that you should really run and that's going to be so let's say for example that we want to merge branched into master in order to do that, we want to make sure that we've got the latest copy of master, right? Because someone else might have actually pushed some changes that we don't have locally. So what we want to do first is actually do a git checkout master. Okay, and now it says we're on master. So I'm going to clear this really quickly. And we're going to do a git pull. It won't pull anything because we're already up to date. And now I can actually run my git merge and the branch name that I want to merge which is branched and of course it's not gonna show anything updating because we don't have any updates but let's say I had an update so let's go back out to um, branched here and now let's just open up sublime text and new file let's save that okay I run a git status here we can see that we're trying to add this new file so I'm just gonna run through the commands pretty quickly git add git commit git push okay so now that file is up on our remote repository and now I want to actually merge branched into master so again what I need to do is git checkout master git pull and git merge branched okay so now that I've done that you can see that we are in fact updating we've got it's it was a fast forward merge and we're, we see the new file and the changes that occurred uh, for insertions and the create mode of that new file so pretty easy stuff okay now for the last thing that we need to cover how do we delete a branch 
Well, deleting a branch is actually extremely easy. All we have to do is run the specific command. Um, now I've merged branched into master, so now I wanna get rid of it, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say uh, git branch dash D, as in delete, and then our branch name. Okay. And now you can see that we have, in fact, deleted our branch. Now let's see if our status was affected by that. Well, technically, yeah, our status is behind by one because we merged, so let's go ahead and push that. Okay, so that has gone to master. Okay, let's go back out to master here, and we have our new file.txt. But you may have noticed that we did not delete this branched, this remote branched branch here. So now let's go through and do that. In order to delete a remote branch, we have to run a little bit of a different command than the git branch command. So, so far we've been primarily working with git branch dash something command. So in order to actually get rid of a remote branch though, we have to run a git push origin dash dash delete and then our branch name. Okay, and now we can see that it's saying that it deleted the branched branch. Let's go back up to GitHub here, refresh, and see if that branch is gone. And in fact, it is now gone. Now, one thing I did want to go over is why would you actually want to delete a branch? And that really depends on your Git methodology. Some people don't like to keep inactive branches around, but it's really up to you. If you're finding that your repo is becoming branch heavy and hard to sift through, then it may make sense to get rid of some of your branches. Okay, that is going to do it for most of this tutorial. I do want to point out that we did not spend a ton of time talking about methodology within this video, but we are working on a best practices for Git video, and in that video we are going to dive more into the methodologies and branching principles. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.